Good afternoon. Um, my name is Crystal Eberly, and I am the principal of Corindeo Academy. And we would like to welcome you to our play. We uh, didn't do one last year. Last year was our year of uh, COVID. Let's not have any big events. And it was really sad. So this year, we decided we were going to power through and have a play. Um, we had one last night, and so today was is our second chance to do this. We are very excited that you're here. Um, these are not all my students. I feel very protective of them, and I love them a lot, but um, a lot of these students are from Coram Deo Academy. Others are from area Christian schools and uh, homeschool, and I think there's one or two that are running start students homeschooled, now running start students. So it's a mixture of kids, and they are enjoying themselves so much in this play. Last night, one of them said, I'm so glad we're doing it again so that I don't have to be sad tonight. <laughs> it is, they, just the, the teamwork that it takes to put on a play like this is pretty amazing. Um, I am very grateful that you're here. Uh, some of you are parents and grandparents of students in this play. And it's been no small effort on your part to get your students here, get them here regularly, and get them here prepared, especially during this season of sickness. We've had a lot of illnesses. We've had a lot of very strange rehearsals where um, until this last week, we haven't even had all the students here at the same time. So um, they're, they're coming together and the show is great. By the way, The Tempest is a comedy. That means you laugh a lot. <laughs> so um, it might take your ear a while to understand what's going on with the Shakespearean language, but there's a lot of Pratt Falls and slapstick comedy as well. So even if you're not understanding all the, the, um, the language, you will still enjoy the comedy. Um, so please laugh heartily. The, the students were kind of surprised to hear everyone laughing last night. Um, you tell them it's funny, but they don't really believe it until they hear it for themselves. So they'll be ready tonight. Um, I do want to warn you, for the next two hours, this room has become enchanted. That means there's going to be fairies and sprites, naiads, dryads, magical dogs, and a couple of goddesses wandering through this room. Now, you're going to be able to see them, but the people on the stage, the human people on the stage, can't see them. So don't be surprised if they seem kind of either worried or scared or perplexed about the things that go on on the stage because they don't see the fairies. Get it? So you will, you, I just wanted you to know that. And um, this right here is the splash zone. So those of you here in the front are going to get a front row seat to a pretty big storm, otherwise known as a tempest. So thank you. Let's begin.
collected. No more amazement. All your pity is hard. There's no harm done. Oh, all the day. No harm. I have done nothing but in care of thee. Thee, my daughter, thee, my dear one, were ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of this full poor cell, and I no greater father. More to know did never meddle with my thoughts. This time I should inform thee part. Lend a hand and pluck my magic garment from me. Wipe thine eyes and have comfort. The dire spectacle of that wreck, which touched the very virtual compassion in me. I have such provision in my heart, so safe to build her, that no soul, no, not so much as a hair, be had to any creature in the vessel, without first cry, but thou saw it sink. Sit, for thou must know first. You often begun to tell me why I am, but stopped and left me to a bullish inquisition. Concluding, stay, not yet. The hours now come, the very minute bids thee open thine ear. Obey, and be attentive. <coughs> Canst thou remember our time before we came into this cell? I do not think thou canst, for then thou wast not out three years old. Certainly, sir, I can. Uh, by what? By any other house or person? Of anything demons tell me that have kept thy remembrance? Tis far off. And rather like a dream than assurance, the my remembrance warns. How do not four or five women that once tended to me? Thou hadst did more, Miranda. But how is it that this lives in your mind? What seest thou else in the dark backward in the abysm of time? If thou remember aught ere thou camest here, how thou camest here thou mayest. But that I do not. Twelve years since, Miranda, twelve years since. Thy father was Duke of Milan and a prince of power. Sir, are you not my father? Thy mother was a piece of virtue. And she said, the most <laughs> And thy father was Duke of Milan and his only heir and a princess no worse issue. Oh, the heavens! What foul play have we that came from thence? Or was it was it we did? Both, both, my girl, by foul play, as thou sayest, were we heaved thence. But blessed thee, help hither. Oh, my heart bleeds to think of the teen I've turned you to, which is for my remembrance. Please you farther. <clears throat> my brother and thy uncle called Antonio. I pray thee, mark me, that a brother should be so perfidious, and Prospero, the prime duke, being so reputed in dignity, and for the liberal arts, without parallel, those being all my study. The government I cast upon my brother, to my state grew a stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. <laughs> thy false uncle, dost thou attend me? Sir, so most heedfully. Thou attendest not. Oh, good sir, I do. I pray thee, mark me. <laughs> I, thus narrating all worldly ends, all dedicated to the closeness and bettering of my mind, with that which, but by being so retired, overprised all popularity, in my false brother awakened an evil nature, and my trust, like a good parent, did beget of him a falsehood in its contrary, as great as my trust was, which indeed had no limit. He, thus being lorded, not only what my revenue yielded, but what my power might else exact, like one who, having into truth by telling of it, made such a sinner of his own memory to credit his own lie. He didn't believe he was indeed the Duke. <sighs> Hence, his ambition growing, dost thou hear? Your tale, sir, was sheer deafness. <laughs> <laughs> Mark the condition and the event, then tell me if this might be a brother. I sin to think but no be my grandmother. Good wounds have borne bad sides. Now the condition. The king of Naples, being an enemy to me in Bedford, hearkens to my brother's suit, which was that he, in lieu of the premises of homage, and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom and convert fair Milan with all the honors on my brother, whereon a treacherous army levy, one midnight fated to the purpose, it Antonio opened the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness the ministers of that purpose hurried thence to thee and the cry itself. Alack for pity, I not remember how I, how I cried, or cry up organ, it is a hit that brings mine eyes to it. Here a little further, 
and then I'll bring thee to the present business, which now is upon us, without the which this story were most impertinent. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Well, demanded wench, my tale provokes that question. Dear, they durst not. So dear the love my people bore me, nor set a mark so bloody on the business. But colors fair painted their foul ends, and few they hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues out to sea. There they prepared a rotten carcass of butt, not rigged, nor tackle, sail, nor mast. The very rats have instinctively quit. There they forced us to cry to the sea and roar to us. Alack, what trouble was I then to you? Oh, a cherubim! Thou wast that did preserve me. Thou didst smile, infused with fortitude from heaven. How came you sure? By providence divine. Some food we had, and some fresh water, that a noble Neapolitan, Gonzala, of her charity, did give us. Rich garments, linen, stuffs, and necessities, which have stated much. So, of her gentleness, knowing I loved my books, she provided me with volumes from my own library, which I prize above my Duke Dome. <laughs> Would I by foot ever see that woman? Now I arise. And here, in this island, have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princesses can, that have more time for vainer hours, and tutors not so careful. Heavens thank you for it. For still, tis beating in my mind the reason for raising these seas by accident, most strange, bountiful fortune, now, my dear lady, hath my enemy been brought to this shore. But here, but, 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 hey, cease more questions. I want to kind of see. Tis a good loneliness, and give it away. I know that canst not choose. Approach, my Ariel, come. Oh, hail, great master, grave sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds. To thy strong bidding, task Ariel and all her quality. Hast thou, spirit, performed to a point the tempest which I made thee? To every article, I boarded the king's ship. Now in the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazed. Sometimes I'll divide and burn in many places. On the topmast, yards, and bowsprit, where I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightning, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight outrunning, were not. The fiery cracks of sulphurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune did seem to besiege, and make his bold waves tremble, yea, his dread trident shake. That's my brave spirit, who is so firm, so constant, that this coil will not infect her reason. Not a soul but felt the fever of mad and played some tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunged in the foaming brine and quit the vessel. Then all the fire with me, the king's son, Ferdinand, with hair upstairing, then like weeds, not hair, was the first man that leapt, cried, Hell is empty and all the devils are here! <laughs> Why, that's my spirit. But was this not my shore? Close by, my master. But are they here yet? Safe? Not a hair perished, on their sustaining garments not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou bade me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling the air with sighs, in an odd angle of the isle, and sitting his arms in this sad knot. Of the king's ship, the mariners, tell me how thou hast disposed of them and all the rest of them. Safely in harbor is the king's ship, in the deep nook where once thou calls me up at midnight, to fetch doom from still vex for moons. There she's hid, the mariners all under hatches stowed, who, with a charm joined to their suffered labor, I have left to sleep. And for the rest of the fleet, which I dispersed, they all have met again and are on the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples, supposing they saw the king's ship wrack and his great person perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed. But there's more work to do. What's the time of day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. The time between six and now must by both of us be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now? Moody? What is it thou against the man? <laughs> my liberty. Before the time is out, ha! No more. I prithee. Remember I have done thee worthy service, <clears throat> told thee no lies, made thee no mistakes, served without grudge or grumblings. Thou 
thou didst promise to beat me a full year. Didst thou forget what a torment I did free thee from? I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul which so grants, who with age and empty has grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where is she born? Speak, tell me. Sir, in a greer. Oh, was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou forgettest. This day in which so grasped with mischief manifold and sorceries terrible to enter into human hearing. From a greer thou knowest was banished. For one thing she did, they would not take her life. Is not this true? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with a child, and here was left by sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reportest thyself, was then her servant. And for thou was here too delicate to enact her earthly and abhorred commands. Refusing her grand hest, she did confine thee into a cloven pine, within which grip in prison that thou didst painfully remain a dozen years. Within which space she died and left thee there, without it bent thy bones as fast as mill wheels strike. Then was this island, save her son she did litter here, a second well had born, not honored with human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. A dull thing I say so that Caliban, whom now I do keep in service. Thou best knowest what torment I did feed thee from, that groans to make wolves howl and penetrate the breast of ever angry bear. It was my art when I arrived and heard thee, and made the pine gate and set thee free. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurest, I'll rend his oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails, and thou hast howled away, foul wizards! Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so, and after two days, I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine. Invisible to every eyeball else. Go, hence with diligence. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. The strangeness of your story but heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come on. We'll visit Caliban, my slave. You never yield us a kind answer. To the villain, sir, I do not love to look on. But as tis, we cannot miss him. He does fetch in our wood, make our fire, and serves in offices with profit us. What ho, slave, Caliban, thou art thou, speak! There's one enough within! Come forth, I say there's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise, when? Fine apparition, my quaint Ariel. Hark in thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Thou poisonous lady, got by the devil himself upon thy wicked damn come forth. As wicked you as my mother brushed with a raven's feather from unwholesome fen, drop on you both, and a southwest wind blow on ye and blister you all over. <laughs> <laughs> For this, be sure tonight that shall have credits. Sigh, tis that shall cut up thy breath. Urchin shell for the vast tonight that they may work, all exodus on its own. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than the bees that made them. I must eat my dinner, the island's mine, by cigarettes my mother, which thou didst takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me and madest much of me. Wouldst give me waters with berries in it, and teach me how to name the bigger light, and how the less that burn by day and night. And I love thee, and I showed thee all the qualities of the isle. Fresh springs, brine pits, barren place, and fertile. Cursed be that I did so. All the charms of cigarettes, toads, beetles, bats light on you, for I am all the subjects that you have. First, when mine was mine own king, and here you sty me in this hard rock and keep me from the rest of the island. The most lying slave, whom strikes me, not kindness, I abuse thee. Filth as thou art, with human care, and lodge thee in mine own cell, for thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh, ho, ho, oh, ho, would it have you done, thou didst prevent me? I'd had peopled else the isle with Caliban. <coughs> a horde, say, which any prayer of Buddhist will take, be capable of all ill. I pity thee. <coughs> to pain, stay to sleep, talk to each hour, one thing or other. When thou art not savage in the mind, meaning the wood to gather like a thing of wish, I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known. But by thy violence, thou thou didst learn, and it with good natures could not abide to thee. Therefore, was thou deserved like the vine to this rock, one deserved more than a prison.
prophet. You taught me a language in my prophet on it, as I know how to curse the red flag red you for learning me your language. Hansy, hence, I just said you and me quick, and our best friends are other business. Shrug is now malice, if now they guess, or doth unwittingly, but I command, I'll rack thee with old cranks, fill thy bones with aches, and make thee roar, that thee shall tremble at thy din. No, pray thee. His art of such, is such a power would control my damn's god set boast and make a vassal of him. So slave, hence! Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. 
A word, good sir, a word. I fear you've done yourself some wrong. A word. Sir, have pity. This is the third man that ever I saw. The first that ever I sighed for. Pity moved my father to be inclined my way. Oh, if a maid and your affections not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. Soft, sir. One word more. <laughs> At first sight, they have changed eyes. But this swift business I must let easy make, lest too late winning break the prize left. Soft, sir, one word more. <laughs> I charge thee that thou attend me. Let us hear you suit the name thou ownest not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy to win it for me, the Lord on No, as I am a man. If the ill spirit has to fair house, good things will dry up strive to dwell with it. Follow me. Speak not for him. He's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shall thy drink. That drew to be the fresh brook muscle, withered husk and roots were in the acorn cradle. No, I will resist such entertainment till my enemy has more power. Oh, dear father, make not too much trial for him. Be gentle and not fearful. What I say, my foot, my tutor, put up thy sword, traitor, who makes a show but darest not to strike. Come from thy ward, thy conscience is possessed with guilt. For here I may disarm thee and make thy weapons drop. <laughs> Beseech you, Father. Hence, hang on to my garments. Sir, have pity on me and sure thee. Silence. One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What? An advocate for an impostor? Do this wench. Thou thinkest there are no such more shapes as he, having seen the him and Caliban. To the most of men, this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. Well, then my ambitions are the most humble. I have no ambition to seek a goodlier man. Come, obey. Thy nerves are their infancy again, and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. Oh, my father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the rack of all my friends, nor this man's threats, to whom I am subdued or but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid, all <laughs> corners else of the earth, let liberty make use of it. Space enough have I to the prison. <laughs> thou hast done well, fine Mary. Hark what thou else shall do. <coughs> Be of comfort, sir. My father's of a dip better nature than it appears by speech. This unwanted which just now came from him. Thou shalt be free as mountain winds, but then exactly to all points of my command. To the syllable. Come, follow. Speak not for him. He's a traitor. <laughs> Alaska. <laughs> 
island seems to be deserted. Oh, oh, oh. So, you're paid. <laughs> Ininhabitable, most inaccessible. Yet? Yet. You could not miss. The island need be of subtle, tender, and delicate temperance. Temperance was a delicate touch. On and subtle, as he most learnedly delivered. The air breathes upon us here most sweet. As if it had lungs, and <laughs> rotten ones. <laughs> or as the perfume of their friend. Here, everything is advantageous to life. True, so you mean to live. <laughs> of that but not, or little. How lush and lusty the grass looks, how green. Ground indeed is tawny. <laughs> and I green it. She misses not much. No, she doth not mistake the truth. Totally. But <laughs> the rarity of this, which is indeed almost beyond credit, as many vouch for are, that her garments, being as they were, drenched to the sea, holds, notwithstanding their freshness and glosses, being rather new dyed than stained with salt water. If but what in Hawkins would speak, would it not say she lies? I, or very falsely, talk it up for report. Methinks our garments are now as fresh as they could have first in Africa. At the marriage of the king, spared on her Clarabelle to the king of Tunis. Twas a sweet man, and we prosper well in our return. Tunis would never grace before with such a paragon to their queen. Not since widow Dido's time. Widow, a pox on that. How came that widow in? Widow Dido. What if she had said, widow or Aeneas, too? <coughs> Good lord, how you take it? Widow Dido said you. You make me sell you that. She was a Carthage, not Tunis. This Tunis, sir, was Carthage. Carthage? I assure you, Carthage. Her word is more than a miraculous heart. Sir, you are talking that her garments seem now as fresh and they put them on first in every at the marriage of your daughter Clarabel, who is now queen. And the rose that uh, can learn. Fate, I beseech you, Widow Dido. Oh, Widow Dido. And Widow Dido. <laughs> It's not, sir. My gown is the first, as fresh as the first day I wore it. I mean, in a sort. That sort was well fished for. <laughs> but I wore it with your daughter's marriage. You cram these words into my ears against the stomach of my sins! Would I never marry my daughter there? But coming since, my son is lost, and in my rage, she too, so far from Italy removed, I ne'er can shall see her. Who oh, thou my heir of Naples and of Milan? What strange fish hath my fits me all of Sir, you may live, for I saw him riding on the back, and he dropped the waters empty to tell his side and breast it. He pursued him a swollen and met him, his bold head filled with impetuous waves. He kept the orders with his arms of the good he lust his joke to the shore, over his wave-worn face bowed, as it says, to leave himself, to alive to land. No, no, he's gone. Sir, you may thank yourself for this great loss. Then would not bless our Europe with your daughter, or rather, lose her to an African, where she, at least, is banished from your eye, who have cause to wet the grief off. Pretty peace. You are kneeled to, and importuned otherwise, by all of us, and the fair soul herself weighed between lowness and obedience, at which end of the beam should bow. We have lost your son, I fear, forever. The law in Naples have no widows in them of this business making, then we bring men to comfort them. The fault's your own. That was the dearest of the law. My lord Sebastian, the truth you speak doth lack some time and gentleness to speak it in. You rub the sore when you should bring the plaster. Very well. That most rub with me. It is foul weather and as all good, sir, when you are cloudy. Foul weather? Ma, 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 ma. <laughs> <laughs> Of this isle, my lord, she would the nettle sea, or docks, or mallows. And when I queen on it, what would I do? Escape being drunk for one wine. <laughs> <laughs> in the commonwealth, no occupation. All men idle, all, and women too. But innocent and pure, no sovereignty. Yes, she would be queen. The larger run of her commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common nature should produce, without sweat or endeavor, treason, felony, sword, pipe, knife, gun, or need of any engine, would I not have? But nature should bring forth of its own kind all poison, all abundance, to feed my innocent people. No Mary, on her subjects? A man, all idle. I would, sir, with such profession govern, to excel the golden age. God save her majesty! Long live, Gonzalo! <laughs> and do Martin, sir. Pretty no more, thou dost talk nothing! 
I do well believe it. And in it to minister occasion to these gentlemen who are of such sensible and nimble lungs, they always used to laugh at nothing. Twas you we laughed at. Oh, <laughs> in this very kind of like I'm nothing to you. So you may continue and laugh at nothing still. Blow, Sir Kevin. And I'd not follow it. Flat long. <laughs> you are a gentleman of brave metal. You would lift the moon out of her sphere if she would continue in it five weeks without changing. We would so, and then go back farther. Nay, good lady, be not angry. No, I warrant you, I will not adventure my discretion so weakly. Will you laugh me asleep, for I am very heavy. Go sleep and hear us. What? All so soon asleep. I wish mine eyes would, with themselves, shut up my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. Please you, sir, do not miss it to be off, brother. That seldom visit sorrow, where it often is a comfort. You too, my lord, will guard your person until you take the rest. And watch, you are safe. Thank you, wonder is heaven. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why does it not let our island sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. All right, my spirits are nimble. They fell together, all was by consent. They dropped, was by a thunderstroke. What might, worthy Sebastian? Oh, what might? No more. Yet, methinks, I see to thy face what thou shouldst be. The occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a cry dropping upon thy head. What? Art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely is a sleepy language. And now speaks out of thy sleep. What is it that it say? This is a strange repose. To be asleep with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, and yet so fast asleep. Noble Sebastian, thou lettest thy fortune sleep. Thy brother winced while thou art waking. Thou dost snore distinctly. There's a meaning. <laughs> I am more serious than my custom. You must be so too, if he be. Which to do so troubles thee over. Well, I am standing water. I'll teach you how to flow. Do so, to air. Hereditary sloth instructs me. Thus, sir, although this lord of weak remembrance, this who shall be as a little memory when he hath earth, hath here almost persuaded. For he's a spirit of persuasion, only professes to persuade. The king, his son's alive. Why, it is impossible that he's undrowned, as he that sleeps here swims. I have no hope that he is undrowned. Oh, out of that no hope. What great hope have you? That way lies away so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a week beyond. But doubt, discover it. There, will you grant with me that? For a man is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me, who's the next heir of Naples? Clarabelle. Tis true. My brother's daughter is queen of Tunis. So is she heir of Naples. Twixt with regions, there is some space. A space without mm -hmm. a cubit seems to cry out. How shall that Clarabelle make respect to Naples keep in Tunis? And that. <coughs> Sebastian, awake. Why say this word, death, that now it sees them? They can be no worse than now they are. There be the cruel labels as well as he that sleeps. Ladies that can prate his empty and unnecessarily, as this Gonzalo. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep was this for your advancement? Do you understand me? Methinks I do. And what does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. True, and look how well my garments sit upon me. Much feeder than before. My brother's servants were then my fellows. Now they are my men. But fair conscience? I said I realized that. If to could put me to my slipper, but I feel not this deity in my bosom. Twenty consciences that stand with me in Milan, candy be they, and melt ere they molest. Why, here lies your brother, no better than the earth he lies upon. If he were that, which now he's like, that's dead, whom I with this obedience steal. Three inches of it can lay to bed forever. Well, you doing thus perpetually, for I might put this ancient mortal, this lady prudence, would abide our course. 
for all the rest, they'll take suggestions that Cat laughs with. They'll tell the clock to any business that we say if it's the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou came, as thou dost long, I'll come by name. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest, and I, the king, shall love thee. Draw together. When I bear my hand, you do the like to fall on this garden's altar. Oh, but one more. <laughs> My master, through his art, foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in, and sends me forth, for else his project dies, to keep them living. <laughs> <laughs> that the sun sucks up from bogs, fens, flats, or prosper fall, and make him by each will a disease. His spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. But the Lord pinch, frighten me with the urchin shows, pitch me in the mire, or lead me like a firebrand in the dark, out of my way unless you bid him. But for every trifle are they set upon me, sometimes like apes that meow and chatter at me, and after bite me, or like hedgehogs, which lie tumbling in my barefoot way, and I mount their pricks at my footfall. Sometimes I am all wound with adders, who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Lo, now, lo, here comes the spirit of his, and to torment me for bringing in my wood slowly. I'll fall flat, perchance he won't mind me. Here is neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all. And another <laughs> storm brewing. I hear it sing in the wind. Yon same black cloud, yon huge one, looks like a foul bummer that would shut his liquor. <laughs> if it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon same cloud cannot choose but fall by pailfuls. What have we here? <laughs> <laughs> a man or a fish? <laughs> He smells like a fish. <laughs> a very ancient and fish-like smell. <laughs> the kind of not the newest, poor John. A strange fish. For I in England now, as once I was, and had but this fish painted 
Not a holiday fool there but would give a piece of silver. There would this monster make a man. <laughs> Any strange beast there makes a man. When they will not give and do it to relieve the lame beggar, they will lay out ten to see a dead end. Legs like a man and his fins like arms? Oh, my troth, I do now let loose my opinion. Hold it no longer. This is no fish. <laughs> But an islander that hath lately suffered by a thunderbolt. <laughs> Alas, the storm has come again. My best way is to creep under his garbardine. There is no other shelter hereabouts. Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. <laughs> I will hear shroud to the dregs of the storm be passed. <laughs> Come forth. I'll pull thee by thy longer legs. 
Can't find any big shrinky loose legs. These are they. Thou art very shrinky little indeed! How gamest thou to be the turd of this new cow? <laughs> Can he vet Trinculos? I took him to be killed by a thunderstroke. But art not thou drowned, Stefano? I hope now thou art not drowned. Is the storm overblown? I hid me under the dead moon calf's garbardine for fear of the storm. But art thou living, Stefano? Oh, Stefano, to the potent skate! For the do not turn me about. My stomach is not constant. <laughs> These be fine things, and if they be not sprites, that's a brave god and he bears celestial liquor. I will yield to him. How didst thou escape? How camest thou hither? Swear by this bottle how thou camest hither. I escaped on the butt of sack, which the sailors heaved overboard. By this bottle which I made from the bark of a tree with mine own hands, since I was cast ashore! I will swear upon that bottle, for the liquor is not earthly. Come, swear then how thou escapest. Swim ashore, man, like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> I can swim like a duck. I'll be swole. There, kiss the bug. Though thou canst swim like a duck, thou art made like a goose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stefano, hast thou any more of this? The whole butt, man. My wine is in a cellar by the seaside where my wine is it. I know, Moon Cup. How does thy you? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was the man in the moon when time was. <laughs> I, I have seen thee and her, and I do adore thee. My mistress showed me thee, and thy dog in thy bush. <laughs> Swear to that. Here, kiss the book. I will furnish it anon with new contents. Swear? <laughs> <laughs> By this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I am fear of him, a very weak monster. The man in the moon, a most poor credulous monster. Well drawn, monster, in good soup. I will show thee every fertile inch of the island. I will kiss thy foot, I pray thee to be my god. By this light, the most perfidious and drunken monster. When his god's asleep, he'll rub his bottom. I will kiss thy foot. I'll swear myself to be thy subject. Come on then, down and swear. I shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster, the moose scurvy monster. I could find it in my heart to beat him. Come, kiss. But that the poor monster is in drink, an abominable monster. I will pluck thee berries, I will fish for thee, and get thee wood enough. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear him no more snakes, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. A most ridiculous monster, to make a wonder of a poor drunkard. I prithee, let me bring them where crabs grow, and with my long nails I will dig thee pink nuts. I will show thee the jay's nest, and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. I will fish for thee, and I will pluck thee berries. Will get, wilt thou go with me? Prithee, lead the way without any more talking. <laughs> Trinculo, our king, and company else being drowned, we will inherit you! Here, grab my bottle. Although Trinculo will fill him by and by again. Farewell, master, farewell, farewell. A howling monster, a drunken monster. No more tales of make for fish, nor fetch in fiery fabric, fire nor spray, treasure nor wash.
There be some sports are painful, and their labor delight in them sets off. Some kinds of baseness are nobly undergone, and most poor matters point to rich ends. This my mean task would be as heavy to me as odious. But the mistress which I serve quickens what's stead, and makes my labor's pleasures. Oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father's crab. He is composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them upon a sore injunction. My mistress weeps when she sees me work. <laughs> Says such baseness I'd never like execute her. I forget. But these sweet thoughts do even refresh my labor. Most busiest when I do it. Alas, no! Pray you, work not so hard. I would the lightning have burnt the logs that you do on the Pray, sit down and rest you. Two a week, perhaps. This will burn for two a week for half a Pray, sit it down and rest you. My father, your, my father is safe. He's safe for these three hours. Oh, most dear mistress, the sun shall set before I must discharge what all I must strive to do. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your logs while. Pray, give me that. I'll carry it to the file. No, sweet creature. I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than for you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. I should do with much more ease. Mine as well as it is it, is it too, and yours it is against. Poor worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. You look wearily. <coughs> no, noble mistress, tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I do beseech you, chiefly that I may set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I have broke your head to say so. Admired, Miranda, indeed, the top of admiration. <coughs> Worth what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady have I eyed with best regards, and many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For many virtues have I liked several women. <laughs> Never any was so full soul, but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it to the foil. But you, oh you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my sex. No woman's face, remember. Save from my glass, my own. Nor have I seen men that I may call you good friend, and my dear father. How features are broad. By my modesty, the jewel my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world but me. Nor can imagination form something to like a. But I prowl of something too widely. And my father precepts I bear and do forget. I am, in my condition, a prince, Miranda. I do think a king. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you did my heart fly to your face. <sighs> there resides to make me slave to it. And for your sake am I this patient logman. Do you love me? Oh, heaven, oh, earth. Bear witness to this sound, I, beyond all limit of what else in the world, do love, prize, honor you. <laughs> I'm a fool to weep at what I'm glad of. A fair encounter between two of rare affections. Heaven's rain grace on that which breathes between them. <laughs> Wherefore weep you? At my unworthiness, but dare not offer what I desire to give. How much let's take what I shall die to want. But this is trifling, and all the more it sticks to hide itself, and the bigger book it shows. Hence, bashful cunning, and holy innocence, and prompt me plain, I am your wife, if you will marry me. <laughs> if not, I'll die your maid. To be your fellow, you may deny me, but I'll be your servant, whether you will or no. Most mistress dearest, and I thus humble ever. My husband, then? I, with a heart as willing as freedom air of bondage. Here's my hand. Mine. Yeah, my heart in it. The farewell, half an hour hence. A thousand, a thousand. <laughs> as glad of this as they, I cannot be. 
who are surprised with all? But my rejoicing at nothing can be more. I'll to my book, for it ere supper time, I must perform much business appertaining.
why, as I told thee, tis a custom in the afternoon for him to sleep where thou mayst batter his skull with a log. But first, burden his ghost, or with a stake, batter his skull, or paunch him, or cut his weasand with thy knife. Remember first to possess his books, for without them he's but a saw, as am I. One spirit to command, they all do hate him as rudely as I. Burn but his books. And the most thing deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her a non-parallel. I never saw a woman but only sick racks, my damn and she, but she far surpasses sick racks. Is it so? <laughs> right for that. Hi, Lord. Monster, I will kill this man. His daughter and I shall be king and queen. <laughs> Save our graces, and treat you and myself shall be miserized. Don't sound like the plot, Trinculo. Excellent. Give me thy hand. <laughs> I'm sorry that I that I beat thee. <laughs> but while thou let us carry off our tongue in thy head. Thou makest me merry, let us speed your con. Will you truly catch? You taught me but while ear. Aye, monster. At thy request, I will do reason. Any reason? Come, drink it out, let us sing!
thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe pronounced the name of Prospero. It did base my trespass. Therefore, my son in the ooze is bedded, and I'll seek him deeper than air plummet sounded, and whistle there like mud. But when be the time, I'll fight their legions, or I'll be thy second. All three of them are desperate. Their great guilt, like poison given to work a great time after, now begins to bite the spirits. I do beseech you that our supper joints, follow them swiftly and hinder them from what this great ecstasy may now provoke them to. Follow, I pray you.
should take any displeasure in you. Look, you! Thou art but a lost monster! Pray you, one more, keep your voice down, for the prize I'll bring to thee shall be with this, Mr. Jans. Now all is hushed as midnight yet. But to lose our bottles in the pool? There is not only disgrace and dishonor in that, but an infinite loss. <laughs> That's more to me than my wetting. Yet this is your harmless fairy, monster. I shall fetch off my bubble, though I bring more arrows from my labor. I pretty my king, if you wait so fill our skins with pinches, makes this strange, strange stuff. Give me thy hand. I do bring it now, bloody fuck! <laughs> oh, King Stefano! Oh, Pierre! Oh, worthy Stefano! Look what a wardrobe is here for thee! Let it alone, thou fool! It is but trash! Oh, ho, oh, monster! We know it belongs to a frippery! Oh, King Stefano! Put off that gown, Trinculo! By this hand, I'll have that crown! Thy grace shall have it. Dropsy down this fool, why you dote on the such luggage? And you the murder first, if he wakes. He'll turn us to barnacles, turn us to barnacles, into apes with foreheads villainous low. Be you quiet, monster. Mr. Slide, is this not my jerkin? Now is this jerkin under the light? Now, jerkin, you are like to lose your hair. I prove a ball of jerkin! <laughs> 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 Though 
with their high wrongs, I'm stroke to the quick. Yet, with my nobler reason, against my fears, I do take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They, being penitent, the sole drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go, release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. The elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes, and groves. I have bedimmed the new tide sun, called forth the mutinous winds, and fixed green sea and azure vault, set a roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder I have given fire, and rifted Joe Stout Oak with his own bolt. The strong base promontory I have made shake, and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves at my command, wake their sleepers open, and let them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I hear abjured, for when I require some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their senses, that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than ever plummet sound, I'll drown my bulk. Mm -hmm. Therefore, are most severe, would he have killed your king? I do forgive thee, unnatural though thou art. Not one of them that yet looks on me or would know me. Ariel, the hat rapier in my cell, fetch it hither. I will this gates me, and myself present as I was sometime in the lawn. Quickly, spirit, I shall ere long be free. Oh, 
storm of trouble, wonder, and amazement and habits here. So the heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country. Behold, Sir King, the wrong Duke of Milan, Prospero. For more assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee, I embrace thy body. And to thee and thy company, I bid a hearty welcome. Where thou beest here, no, or some enchanted trifle to appease me, as late I have been, I am not known. Thy pulse beats as a flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind admits, with which I fear madness held me. Thy duke to my resign, and do entreat you, pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prospero be living, and be here? First, noble sir, let me embrace thy name, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the eye that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friends all. But you, my brace of lords, were I so minded, I could pluck his highness's frown upon you and justify you both traitors. But at this time, I will tell no tales. The devil speaks in him. No, for you, most forget, sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth. I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thy must restore. If thou be prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation. How thou menaced here, who three hours since are racked upon this shore, where I have lost, how sharp the point of this remembrance is, my dear son Ferdinand. I am woe for it, sir. Here, parable is the loss, and patience says it is past her cure. I rather think you have not sought her help. Of who sought grace for the like loss? I have her sovereign aid, and rest myself content. You the like loss? As great to me as late to make the dear loss. Have I means much weaker than you, may call to comfort you, for I have lost my daughter. A daughter, O oh heavens, that they live in both in Naples, the king and queen there. That they were, I wish myself in but in that easy bed where my son now lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. But howsoever you have been jostled from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospero, and that very duke which was thrust forth from the lawn. <laughs> and here, who most strangely, upon this shore, where you were at, was landed to be lord on it. Welcome, sir. This sells my court. And here have I a few attendants, but subjects none abroad. I pray you, look in. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will requite you with as good a thing, at least a wonder, to contend you, as much as me, my dukedom. Sweet lord, you would like false. No, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms you to wrangle, and I would call it fair play. This prove a vision of the act one dear son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad father come to see about. Arise, say how those kings here. Oh, wonder, how many goodly creatures are there here. How beauteous mankind is. Oh, brave the world that has such people in it. Tis new to thee. Who is this maid who now stood at play? The oldest acquaintance cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that hath served us and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal, but by immortal province she is mine. She is daughter to this famous Duke of Milan, of whom so often <laughs> I have heard her down, but never beheld before. And second, a second life have I received through her. And a second father, this lady makes him to me. And I am hers. But oh, how only shall I sign that I must ask my own child for forgiveness? There, sir, stop. <coughs> Let us not burden our remembrances with a heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept, or should have spoke ere this. Look down, you gods, and on this couple drop a blessed crown. For it is you that have chalked forth the way which brought us hither. I say amen, God's honor. <coughs> Was Milan? Thrust from the lawn that his issue should become kings of Naples. O oh, rejoice beyond a common joy, and set it down with gold on lasting pillars. In one voyage did Clarabella her husband find at Tunis, and Ferdinand her brother found a wife where he himself was lost. Prospero, his dukedom in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves, when no man was his own. 
Give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace this heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so. Amen. Oh, look, sir. Look, here's more of us. I prophesied, if a gallows were on land, this man could not drown. Now, blast me that swears, great reward. Not an oath on shore. Hast thou no by land? What is the news? The best news is we've safely found our king and company. The next, our ship, which, but three glass of sips we gave out split, is tight and yar and bravely rigged, as when we first put out to sea. All this service have I done since I went. My tripsy spirit. These are, these are not natural events. They strengthen from strange to stranger. Say, how came you hither? If I did think, sir, I were blue awake, I'd strive to tell you. We were dead asleep, and how, we know not. All clapped at our hatches, where, but even now, it was strained in several noises. A roaring, shrieking, howling, jingling chains, and board of burst new sounds, all four of them. We were awake straightway at liberty, where we, in all who trim, freshly beheld our royal good and gacha, our master capering to Ireland. On a trice, so please you, even in a dream, we were divided from him and brought both in him. Was well done? Was bravely done, my little niece. Thou shalt ere long be free. This is a strange maze as e'er men trod, and there is more in this business than nature was e'er conduct of. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not infest your mind with the beating on the strangeness of this place. I pick the letter, which shall be shortly, single, I will resolve you, which to you shall seem most probable of every of these happen accidents. So then, be cheerful, and think of each thing well. Come hither, spirit. Set Caliban and his companions free. Untie the spell. How fares my gracious sir? There are yet missing of your company some few odd lads that you remember not. Auspicious scales and sails, 
so expedient that you'll catch your royal fleet far off. My area, check. That is thy charge. Then to the elements, be free and fare thou well. Please you, draw near. Now my charms are all overthrown, and what strength I have, mine own, which is most faithful. <coughs> now tis true, I must be here confined by you, or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got, and pardon the deceiver, dwell in this bare island by your spell. But release me from my bands, with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours, my sails must fill, or else my project fails, which was to plead. As you from crimes would pardon me, let your indulgence set me free. Teenagers having no idea what to do. So I want everyone to give them a big round of applause. 